good evening everyone so today we will be discussing about uh, atomic optical spectrometry so in this topic if you see there are three words atomic optical and spectrometry so we will go from backwards uh, to the front so spectrometry we have all seen that um, interaction of the electromagnetic radiations uh, uh, with the matter it is being studied in in the field of spectrometry <coughs> and till now we have talked about a, uh, some of the methods in the spectroscopic uh, some of the spectroscopic method the first one was the uv visible second was the fluorescent spectroscopy then we talked about raman then uh, we also talked about luminometry uh, and in fluorescence we have uh, fluorescence plus phosphorescence we have discussed and combining those uh, these two we have luminometry okay so we have discussed about all these things now in optical this word optical it is associated with the word optics which is again associated with the vision so when we talk about vision we are interested in the visible spectrum of emr right we are interested in the visible spectrum of the emr now if you <clears throat> consider this kind of whatever the uh, methods we have discussed uh, we can majorly break down this spectroscopic techniques into two ways the first one is absorption spectroscopy okay so in the absorption spectroscopy <clears throat> what we had we had a light source now then we were having some excitation optics i would write it as eo excitation optics then we were having sample then in the same line we will be having um, emission uh, optics anything which is being emitted out of the sample or transmitted not emission may be transmitted in optics it will be correct to use the word transmitted so, transmission optics and then we are having you know, we are having detector okay so this is the general layout in the absorption spectroscopy and we have discussed on the uv visible spectroscopy both in the absorption spectroscopy and in the reflect and spectroscopy method okay so second as i told you there is a reflectance spectroscopy in reflectance spectroscopy we have the sample and i am just clubbing this source and excitation optics and transmittance optics and detector on the one side so we have the source and we have the detector on the same side and in between we will be having some optics okay. and in reflectance both source and the detector are on the same side whereas in the absorption our source and the detector they are on the opposite side of the sample then third okay in the third case we have discussed about the this uh, emission spectroscopy in emission spectroscopy we have fluorescence and phosphorescence 
so what is happening what was happening you are having the sample then you have the light source and the detector which are at 90 degree apart okay so this was in the emission spectroscopy okay so this optical spectroscopy or optical spectrometry if you see we can divide it into uh, broadly into these three categories and lastly coming to this atomic world as the name suggests over here we will be talking about the atoms in both uv visible and fluorescence spectroscopy we were talking about electronic transition okay so over there the electrons they were moving from the lower uh, level or the ground state level to the virtual excited state level and then they were coming back and Uh, this was happening similarly in the electronic transition also we saw the same thing however in the raman spectroscopy we saw that there was a scattering of light now when we are talking about this atomic optical spectroscopy we are getting information about the atoms now how does the atom it will give you um, the information again over here also we have electronic transitions okay which will provide us some uh, information about the atom okay so uh, these are there now let's go into the basics of this one if you look into the atomic structure the bohr atom and the quantum jumps so if you see we have nucleus and we have this electron shells which are regarded as the orbits where we have n1 n2 n3 n1 is the ground state n2 and n3 they are the excited states now we all know in n1 it is the most stable state okay so what happens when the photon from the outer orbitals they come to the inner orbital what do they do they emit radiations okay whereas when we have this photon absorption the electron it jumps from lower state to the outer state okay and it comes to the outer electron shells and it will absorb some energy from the incident radiations okay so there are two things absorption of photon photon is nothing but our energy it is associated with energy e of the electromagnetic radiation and the second is emission of energy now the emission of energy it is usually in the uh, visible light region similarly the absorption of photon this is also in the visible light region okay 
so we have all studied that from the ground state the electrons they may gain energy and they go to the higher energy levels and during that state they absorb the energy and when they are coming back from that outer energy levels or the excited energy levels to the ground state they will emit the photon okay so the first one is for the photon emission so there will be emission of lights over here and in the second case over here in the photon absorption there will be absorption of light okay so what are these quantum jumps photon emission heat or other stimuli may cause an electron to break out of its energy band and jump over one or more energy bands down to a lower energy orbit releasing a photon with a quantum of energy corresponding to the difference in the energy level between the two orbits okay so what does this say this says that these orbits these are quantum levels so when the electrons come from n3 to n2 there is a fixed amount of energy associated with that if there is a transition between n3 to n1 there is a specific transition and those energies they are called this uh, these uh, jump in the energy levels these are called quantum jumps secondly the another type of quantum jump it may be the photon absorption conversely when photons collide with an atom their energy may be transferred to and absorbed by the atoms electrons causing them to jump to higher energy level orbit okay so here in we have seen that there are two possibilities for an electron to move within the orbit one would cause the absorption and the second would cause the emission absorption of what absorption of light or emr similarly emission of electromagnetic okay now if you look into the spectra of the white light it will be something like this it will start from v and it will end at r so what is this vip gear range okay the thing is that when the electron it is coming from n3 level to n1 level there is a certain uh, quantum jump and due to this quantum jump you will be having some uh, some uh, uh, this uh, visible radiation they will be emitted and these emitted light it if you capture it it will look like this lines okay so this is the hydrogen emission spectrum okay when there is a transition of the electrons from one level to the other on the contrary when you talk about this absorption spectral lines you will see that within that same visible spectrum at the same levels where there was emission of the hydrogen uh, where there was the uh, emission spectrum at those same levels there will be absorptions okay so both absorption of the electromagnetic radiation or the emission of the electromagnetic radiation it is basically wavelength specific okay so it is wavelength specific so wavelength it is basically if you see e equals to h mu and it is nothing but hc by lambda so wavelength is basically related with the energy so basically wavelength will decide how much energy is required whether it is being absorbed or it is being emitted okay 
from a specific absorption of the emission uh, emission processes so that will be um, uh, that will be uh, what you call uh, in the case of this uh, emission spectrum and in the case of this uh, absorption spectrum both will be having at the same energy level that means either the absorption or the emission it is having or it is occurring at the same energy level okay so if you see these emissions are being occurring at different or absorptions are being occurring at the different wavelengths so these different wavelengths it will give you uh, the information about the quantum jumps within the specific or by uh, orbits of the electron shells okay now then uh, there is another spectra where you have uh, in the initial one you have the continuous spectrum then you have the spectral lines for the sodium okay you have the spectral lines for the hydrogen you have the spectral line for the calcium and you have the spectral line for the mercury now for each of these atoms if you see if you compare the spectral lines for each of these spectral lines they are having a different uh, type of uh, patterns okay now over here this one uh, this figure what it has been given it is basically the emission spectrum it is basically the emission spectrum okay so if you see the lines will appear at the same wavelength however in the emission spectrum you will see that there is a black background and over there you will be having um, this colored spectral lines or brighter lines whereas in the absorption spectrum you will be having bright background black background and over there we will be having dark lines okay so this is the thing any questions up uh, till now <clears throat> now coming to the next one so schematics of basic components of uh, analytical techniques based on atomic optical spectrophotometry so the atomic optical spectrophotometry it can be carried out in three ways first one absorption mode second one emission mode and third is atomic absorption absorption spectrometry aes in short aes okay now if you see over here in the first case it is associated uh, it is related to the absorption spectrometry okay in the absorption spectrometry you have the light you have the sample then you have the um, on this detector which are on the opposite sides okay in the second one in the emission mode the source and the detector it is 90 degree apart and lastly the atomic emission spectrometry which is equivalent to the luminometry illuminometry what we had we had systems which were 
not having any uh, what you call uh, there was no need for any excitation source okay so there was no need for excitation source whereas in the absorption and the uh, emission uh, mode of spectrometry we had we required the source okay now this was the analogy between the different spectroscopic methods which we have discussed earlier and over here and what is the dissimilarity the dissimilarity is that if you look into the sample we have used a word atomizer okay so what is an atomizer atomizer is a device which converts the samples into their constituent atoms so here in what is happening the light source is emitting the electromagnetic radiation and this electromagnetic radiation it is directly interacting with the atoms okay it is directly interacting with the atoms okay. and then what of the light it is going on um, on to the other side it is being dispersed we are breaking down the light components and then we are um, recording the spectra similarly over here we are we don't want to um, uh, take this um, uh, we just uh, uh, we just want to uh, 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 have a look into the emission spectra so this spectrum from the light source it is not uh, being taken into account and whatever the fluorescence is uh, we are get, uh, not the fluorescence the emission in this case whatever the emission spectra we are getting we are collecting that and lastly within the sample the lines are being created and we are just measuring over here so in all these cases when we are converting it into the atom we are basically burning the material at a very high temperature okay so a dilute solution of the samples are taken they are being atomized in over there and at the same time they are being um, uh, they are being subjected to a very high temperature and that high at that high temperature the electro uh, when the electromagnetic radiations they interact with the atoms they um, uh, give us this absorption spectra or the emission spectra in this case in the third case uh, where we talk about this aes you must have studied in your class that if you want to measure the sodium ions within a salt so what you uh, what we you did in your chemistry labs in class 12 10 12 in this thing you had a bunsen burner where you had a, uh, this flame and then you mix the salt with some reagent and you take it in a platinum loop and when you take this um, uh, take your sample a small amount of sample and you put it into the flame what would happen a different color light would be generated okay so this light the color of this light not this light the color of this light it was giving us information about the different uh components within the sample right so by doing different analysis we could find out whether there are sodium ions within the samples or not we could find out whether the potassium ions are there or not so this we can do now this last method atomic emission spectroscopy it is nothing but the same thing but you are instead of measuring the color you are recording the 
spectrum of the light which is coming out and uh, and what is why this color is being generated the color is being generated because there is a uh, there is an emission process which is going on and hence it is called as atomic emission spectroscopy so and from where this emission is coming going on this emission is coming from the atomic levels okay because what we are doing we are converting the samples into relevant atoms using this atomizer using this atomizer are you getting my point so among the various type of aes we have a special type of aes which is called icp aes inductive inductively coupled plasma which we will be taking up later on here in a high temperature plasma is being used for the atomization process for the atomization process okay so am i clear till now why it is called atomic you know, optical spectrometry atomic because using the atomizer we are converting the samples into the relevant atoms then optical means we are dealing with the visible light whether uh, either the visible light is being absorbed by the sample or there is an emission of the uh, vis uh, visible light okay and then spectrometry means recording the uh, spectrum with respect to the wavelength now another important thing which i told you that the absorption lines and the emission lines they appear in the at the same wavelengths okay up till now everything is clear for you guys yes sir yes sir now the implementation of this three techniques atomic emission you put the sample in within the flame you record it using a detector okay and this detector it will be having a, a spectrum uh, decomp uh, decomposing unit which will help you to record the spectrum okay or to record the spectrograph okay in atomic absorption as i told you there will be a source then there will be a flame in the flame you, know, you will be having the sample which will be in the atomic into form and then on the other side you will be having the detector and you get the spectrograph in the third one atomic fluorescence spectroscopy you have the source and the detector at a 90 degree angle now again over here atomization is being taking place in the flame so you can see <coughs> why you have been doing this uh, different chemical analysis in your school level you are basically observing the atomic emission okay and if you had the knowledge to record the this spectrum you could have recorded the spectrum and that would have given you a much better information about the um, what you call uh, much better information um, uh, about the spectral lines within the samples okay <clears throat> now the basic principle what i told you if there is a light energy and then you have the atom in which is in the ground state it will go to the excited state and uh, this would result in the absorption of the visible light now the basic process of uh, atomic emission atomic absorption and atomic fluorescence so in the atomic emission due to um, the gain in the thermal energy the atoms will go to the excited state and they will come down to the ground state by emission of the radiation in atomic absorption the light waves they will be absorbed and they, it will go to the uh, excited state and during that it will be absorbing a, a, uh, a certain components of the visible light okay that you can uh, get it as the dark lines then in the atomic fluorescence we have 
<laughs> the atoms they will absorb the light they will go to the excited state and while they will be coming back to the ground state they will be emitting the radiation <clears throat> now atomic absorption spectroscopy as i so said there will be source and from this source you will be having a wide band of um, what you call light which will be going through the sample which is basically being atomized atomized okay and then we will be having the detector and in this detector we will be having this dark lines or which are called line spectra okay so here what is happening you will get this radiation it will go to the uh, excited states and due to this excited states see there are uh, various excited states so maybe from one to other you will be getting this spectral lines and if you uh, plot a line plot from here so you will get this type of spectral graphs okay in aes you atomize the sample and automatically the there will be the uh, radiations which will be uh, emitted from the samples and those will be detected and here you will be getting the brighter spectral lines okay and the background would be the black okay. <clears throat> now the atomic absorption spectroscopy it can be um or what do you call it? it can be a, a single beam spectroscope or it may be a double beam spectroscope okay so in the single beam and double beam spectroscope what is the difference between uh, the uv visible based or the other absorption based system and over here in this case if you see in the uv visible spectrophotometer there was no chopper however here there is a chopper then we have an atomizer okay and then the other uh, electronics and the optical systems they are there so what does this do when you have this lamp which is generating light uh, in the vibrio region that means the visible region so you are getting a continuous spectrum over here in once you get this spec continuous spectrum what this chopper do it for uh, for a particular period of time it will send the light then it will stop the light band then again it will send the light and the, again there will be a stopping of the light so what it to do when the light is being excited over here in this stop time it will record the signal over here it will record the signal okay. so in that way it will be able to um uh, it would be able to uh, uh, stop the glare of the lamp to be recorded in the detector Okay. Whereas in the double beam spectrophotometry, there is the same thing. However, there is a beam splitter. The beam splitter was also there in the UV visible spectroscopy. However, in this case, the beam splitter it is being linked with the electronics. Okay. So when the this light it is going through the atomizer. the beam splitter will inform this electronics or it will be basically uh, the position of the beam splitter it will be known by known by the electronics component and accordingly it will uh, record the signal whereas when the beam splitter it will direct the beam to the reference beam again this electronic component it will be having a knowledge of that and it will be recording the reference beam and by 
measuring the differential differential spectrum by recording the differential spectrum we can obtain the uh, readouts in a more appropriate manner here in there is a beam recombiner okay so what uh, what is the job of this beam recombiner it is combining the beam from the sample and from the reference beam over here however you should keep in mind even though it is trying it is it is told that it is a recombiner so when the sample beam is going from the beam recombiner the reference beam is not available and vice versa that means when the reference beam is being sent to the detector by the beam recombiner the sample beam it does not uh, there is nothing over there and it does not gain entry into the uh, detector okay i hope this is clear to all of you so in the first case we have a lamp we have a chopper this chopper it will have some on time during that on time it will um, have an uh, the light will pass through and during um, that passage time it will interact with the sample and you will be getting the uh, and uh, and just after that this chopper it would stop the lamp light to be gaining uh, uh, to gain entry into the on this sample chamber and during that time the readout will be happening okay the the similar thing happens in the beam splitter there are two beams which are being you know, there one which will pass through the sample and the other will be redirected to the uh, reference beam so the sample the beam which is coming out of the sample beam it is uh, coming out of the sample it is called sample beam and the beam which is being redirected to the reflectors they are called reference beams okay and accordingly they will be the, uh, the recording of this both the sample beams and the reference beams and then the differential spectrum will be calculated okay now the radiation sources there are different types of radiation sources <clears throat> broadly the radiation sources they can be categorized into line source and continuous source sometimes i think it is also, yeah line source and uh, continuous source so line source means you will be having only particular uh, wavelength of radiations coming out of the line source okay so if you see the first slide in the sodium ion if you see we are having some specific we are having some specific colored lines and only these colored lines which are discrete color lines it will be absorbed okay so what are the different types of line sources the first one is the hollow cathode lamp hcl it is uh, called the it is a cold cathode lamp um, and it is basically a ls aas that means line source atomic absorption spectroscopy so for line source atomic absorption spectroscopy similarly we have electrode less discharge lamps it is also a line it is also used for line source atomic absorption spectroscopy and deuterium hcl um, hollow cathode lamp hcl stand for hollow cathode lamp um it is also used in line source atomic absorption spectroscopy and lastly we have continuum sources and it is called uh, continuous source atomic absorption spectroscopy where we basically use xenon arc lamp which generates light or the electromagnetic radiation in the range of 190 nanometer to 
nanometer. Now, if you see over here in the first slide, what I told is that the absorption spectra and the emission spectra they occur at same wavelength. That means the electrons when they are going from the inner to the outer levels, suppose it is absorbing a wavelength of lambda 1, while it is emitting the light, it will again emit the light at lambda 1 wavelength only. Right? That means when we have this sodium, uh, these spectral lines, the specific wavelength specific wavelength uh, electromagnetic radiations they can be generated over here are you getting my point over here specific wavelength uh, electromagnetic radiations can be generated and this specific wavelength electromagnetic radiations they can be used for absorption spectroscopy and vice versa. So if you have to excite the sample, say if you want to excite the sodium sample, if you want to analyze the sodium, yeah, uh, if you want to find out whether uh, there is any sodium element over there, so what you do, you will generate a light or the electromagnetic radiations of the sodium light using the, of the sodium okay so uh, of the sodium metal and this metal it will generate specific wavelength lights over here and then that specific wavelength lights they will they can be used to stimulate only and only the sodium ions are you getting my point so this is what this hollow cathode lamps they do these hollow cathode lamps, they are designed in such a way that uh, they will generate specific wavelength uh, electromagnetic radiations and those specific wavelength radiations will be capable enough to excite the samples. Okay, And you will be able to get information only and only from that specific uh, whatever uh, metal component for, uh, which you want to analyze. Suppose if you are generating the radiation source, this line source using sodium ion, you can only use it for the analysis of the sodium ions. So it is allowing you to uh, reject um, the what you call, it is allowing you to reject the signal components say from potassium and all these things. So these other elements they will not be interfering with your analyzing. Are you getting my point? <clears throat> On the contrary, suppose uh, you want to analyze sodium, you want to analyze potassium, you want to analyze calcium and so on. For each of these elements, you will be needing a specific hollow cathode lamp. That is one of the disadvantages, but the advantage is that there will be no uh, cross influence of the other elements in your analysis. In continuum uh, sources, like in the xenon arc lamp, you will be having a wide band of analysis and you can analyze a large number of uh, elements over there. However, uh, it will be diff uh, during the analysis process uh, while you will be getting these elements, this uh, spectrum, you will be getting the spectral lines for different elements in a same line. So the analysis would become a bit difficult. Okay. So I hope uh, uh, you people I have been able to make you understand this thing. So in the next class, we will start with uh, how this um cathode lamps and all these hollow cathode lamps they work do you have any questions 
No, sir. No.